Hey guys, Chris from Axe Effects Tutorials here, and in this video, I want to show you how to back up your Axe Effects 3 or FM3, and also how to install new firmware that you find on the forum or on the Fractal website. Now, first, I'm going to go through the steps quickly just to show how easy it is, and then I'm going to explain a little bit after. To back up and update your gear, you'll need to use FractalBot, and for a while, it was only possible to use it as a standalone program. But these days, it is built right into Axe Edit or FM3 Edit. And for this example, we're going to use Axe Edit. So go to Tools and FractalBot, and it'll open up right within Edit. You don't need to open up that other program. Send Mode comes first, and this is what you're going to use to update your firmware. But you always want to use Receive Mode first. So click the Receive Mode tab. Make sure your device is selected here, in this case, Axe FX3. And then you're going to browse where to save the files. So click Browse, go to a folder you want to save all of this backup data to. I've already done that. And then you just hit Begin. Now, when you hit Begin, an option menu comes up first. So it's going to ask, what do you actually want to back up? If you've never backed up your AxeFX or FM3 before, definitely click Backup the AxeFX or FM3, and it'll select everything. You always want a full backup available just in case something goes wrong down the road. Make sure that check mark is there and then just hit OK. Now this is going to take a while. Sometimes it takes up to half an hour. It depends on exactly what you're backing up. So click OK, go get some coffee, go take a jog or something, come back and then your backup will be done. If you know what you're doing and you don't need to back up your user cab banks or you're only using preset bank A, for example, you can uncheck those and just back up what you want. That'll speed up the backup. But again, make sure you at some point have a backup of every single thing. Once you've done the backup, and again, I keep saying this, but it's very important to have a backup, then I would suggest going to send mode and sending the new firmware. All you do is step one, again, make sure your current device is selected. We're using an AxeFX 3. You're going to click browse, or you can just drag and drop the file right in here. And it's going to be a firmware file that ends with .syx, a sysx file. So I'm going to drag that from my desktop right now. There's that. And then you just hit begin. Now this will start immediately and it'll update your firmware. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But that's it. Once it's done, it'll tell you to turn the AxeFX or FM3 off and then on again. And then you're set. Okay, so now you know how to back up and update your gear. But let's take a closer look. Step one is pretty easy. You just choose the gear that you're using. And if you pull up FractalBot from within Axe Edit or FM3 Edit, your only option will be that gear since it's already connected. So that's much faster and easier. In step two, for Browse, when you click Browse, it's going to open up your Finder window on Mac or your Explorer folders on Windows. And if we do that, we get our familiar window or folder view. All you do is click the folder that you want to select. I've already selected Fractal Backup here in my Dropbox, and I'm going to hit Open. And as you can see, it's going to my Fractal Backup folder, and that's it. This shouldn't change from session to session, but sometimes you might need to browse and find it again, but no big deal. So this is the folder where all the files are actually going to save to and where you can recover them if you need to later. Again, in step three, clicking begin brings up an option menu. It doesn't immediately start, so let's click that. And again, we have a bunch of options here. So you can back up the entire Axe Effects. And like I said before, if you've never done that, definitely do it at some point. I like to do this at least once a month. If I'm uh, making a lot of changes, I might do it once a week or after every session. Again, it's always good to have a full backup of every single thing just in case you need to borrow someone else's Axe Effects or you just want to go back to something you had last week, things like that. So it's always good to back up frequently. Again, it takes a little while, so click OK and then you know go do some other stuff, come back. It doesn't get any faster if you sit there and watch it. As I said before, if you know what you're doing, you can uncheck some of these if you don't need to back up banks A through C. Let's say those are still the factory presets. They are on mine and I don't need to back them up. I can just always download them again. So I can uncheck that. Um, bank D is where my personal presets are. I use a few user cabs, but I don't use user cab bank 2 on the AxeFX 3, so I can uncheck that. This one, System and Global Blocks and FC, I would leave that checked all the time. That's a really small file, so it doesn't add too much time, but it's good to have backups of your uh, FC controller settings, um, any system settings like your setup menus, as well as Global Blocks uh, if you have to transfer things to another Axe Effects or something like that. In addition to all these options, you can just back up a single preset, but of course, you know you can do that with Export in Axe Edit, uh, but you can do it here as well. You choose the number. 
Uh, you can back up the current preset that you're on from the edit buffer. So if you've made a few changes and you choose this option, it'll back that up. And you can also back up an individual user cab if you need to export that for some reason. So just choose any of these options and hit OK. Right now, I'm just going to back up preset bank D just so I have my presets before I update to a new firmware. So while this is going, let's explain why it's so important to have a backup, especially of your presets. In short, preset files saved with newer firmware may not load correctly on older firmware. And this makes sense. If we made a preset in firmware 13, for example, but then we rolled back to firmware version 5, firmware 13 had new features, new parameters, things like that. If we try to put those presets back on firmware 5 where those things didn't exist, they wouldn't have a place to go and things might not load correctly. The firmware data of your hardware is separate from the data of your presets. As we all know, if you update your firmware, your presets don't change. It doesn't overwrite your presets. It doesn't change them in any way. The presets are the same. That's because it's separate data from the firmware of the hardware. However, when you update your hardware firmware, say from 12 to 13, the presets are also sort of flagged as firmware version 13 as well. So again, they're separate. Nothing changes in the preset itself but the presets know that they were saved last with firmware version 13. That's why you need to have a backup of your presets with the older version of firmware as well. So as you update firmware, it's actually a good idea to always back up your Axe Effects. If you can do the full backup, that'd be great. Then you, there's no question, you have every single thing. But like I'm doing right now, I know all of my presets are only in bank D, so I'm just backing up bank D. Now I know if I update to the next firmware and there's an issue or I just don't like it, I can roll back to the previous firmware and I have all of my preset data from that older firmware and it's guaranteed to work. So again, if you're updating to a new firmware, back up your presets first with the current firmware that you're on, save it to a folder, then update, and then if you need to roll back for any reason, you have all of the data you need to so it works. When you're done backing up, a pop-up will show backup complete and you hit OK and that's it. And if we look back at that folder, we can see the file that I backed up. Now remember, for this video, I just chose to back up bank D, so that's the only file we see. But if you did everything else, you'll see bank A, B, C, D, system info and things like that, user cabs, everything you selected. Now from here, it just dumps it into a folder. It's a good idea to make new folders in here with the date and the firmware. So I'll just right click and this is a Mac, so you hit new folder. I'm gonna title the folder 12.08 public beta one, since that's what I just backed up. That's what's currently loaded on the Axe Effect, so I'm gonna call the folder exactly that. And if you wanna put the date, you can do that, but most uh, folder programs will show the date that you made it. So hit enter and that's that. I'm just gonna drag this right into there. And if you had more files, of course, drag them all in, but here you go. Now what some people do is in addition to the backup files from the Axe Effects or FM3 itself, they also put the firmware file right in this folder as well so they don't have to search for it later. So I have it here, 12.08 beta one, and there it is. So now if I want to roll back for whatever reason to 12.08 beta one, I have the firmware update for the Axe Effects itself and I have my files right here, my preset files, so I can load it in all at the same time. So as time goes on and you back up before you update your firmware, you'll have folders with 12.08, 12.09, 12.10, and so on. And it will either just have the files that you backed up, or if you want to, you can also put the firmware update file right in this same folder. Everything's in one spot. Just open up the folder and you have your firmware update file as well as your backups to re-upload into the Axe Effects. So let's say I do want to roll back. How do I do that? So to either update to the next firmware or to roll back to the previous firmware that we just saved in that folder, you need to go to the send tabs or send mode in FractalBot. Once again, be sure to choose the device you're using. It's the Axe FX3 in this example. And we're gonna choose the file to send. You can either click browse and it'll open up your finder or explorer window just like before. But I find it easier to just click and drag the file from an open folder on my computer. So let's say we updated to firmware, I don't know, 20 in the future, like we're on firmware 20. So right now it's showing we're connected with 12.08 beta, but let's just say it says 20. 
And let's say for some reason in the future, I'm like, oh, you know, I really want to go back to firmware 12. Well, good thing I backed up and I have all my data. So first you want to send the firmware update file. And again, that's the .syx file that Fractal Audio gives us in the updates. I'm going to click and drag that file over here. And there it is, it's ready to go. And then I would just hit begin. Now I'm not doing it just for the video, but you hit begin and it'll start updating the Axe Effects. And when it's done, it'll tell you to turn it off and then turn it back on. Once the firmware is installed and you've power cycled the Axe Effects or FM3, you want to click and drag any of the files you got from the backups previously. So if we look at the folder, remember that we had this bank D that we just backed up. All I'm going to do is click and drag that file into step two and then hit begin and it'll just immediately send whether it's a user cab or presets or the system data. That's how you reinstall any backups that you've made. So the first thing to send is the firmware file. And once that's done, just send all the other backup files the same way. And you'll have your Axe Effects just like it was right when you backed it up. Updating your firmware to the latest version is really simple, but there's something some people get hung up on and I'm going to show you that here. When you download the file from the Fractal Audio website or the forum, what you're going to download is something called a zip file. This is a compressed file. Uh, it takes up less room and it's easier to download and things like that. But this is not the file that you're going to send to the Axe Effects. This is a compressed file. A zip file is a pretty common thing. What you want to do in either Windows or Mac, typically you want to double click that file and it will uncompress and open. So as you can see, I had a zip file and now I also have a regular folder with the same name. And if I look inside that folder, there's my .syx file along with the release notes. Read the release notes. Uh, that tells you all the latest changes in this specific firmware. So again, you're not going to install this specific zip file. You're going to unzip the file. Again, usually double clicking it on Windows. Sometimes you have to right click and choose extract. But I'm on a Mac right now, so I can't quite show that. Once you extract or unzip the file, you'll see a regular folder, double click it, and that's where your file is. So I'm just gonna click and drag that new file here, beta two, that's what I happen to be installing today. And then I can hit begin. So once you hit begin, it will start sending the file immediately. So we're transferring right now, and there's a percent indicator. And on the front screen, you'll also see the same percentage. And as it updates, it'll just fill up until it's done. Now it's very important, don't, click around in Axe Edit, don't turn off the unit, don't touch anything, just let it finish. Let it finish updating. If you happen to turn off the Axe Effects while it's simply uploading the file, transferring it to the Axe Effects, that's not too bad. Usually nothing happens, it just didn't get the whole file. However, once it finishes sending and the screen turns sort of a red color and it's actually writing the data, that's when you really, really do not want to turn it off. If you have a battery backup supply, it's always good to plug into that just in case of anything. If something bad does happen during the update process, there is a way to recover it. And I'll show you that in just a bit. So we're getting close to the file finishing uploading and we're there now. So you're going to see it change more to a red. So this is a fast process here, but once it's red, again, do not turn off, do not unplug, don't jiggle anything, just let it finish. And when it's all done, you're going to see on the front screen, it's going to say update complete, turn the power off. And also usually at the end of the process, FractalBot will show you uh, the transfer is complete. Follow the instructions on the front panel. So what does it say? It says, turn the power off, wait five seconds and turn it on. So we're going to do that. So turn it off. One, two, three, four, five. That's done. We can turn it back on. And go ahead and click this pop-up if you haven't already, clear that. Now it's turning on, so Axe Edit isn't gonna work. It's gonna start communicating. So just wait again, wait for everything to boot up. The screen's gonna finish booting up and that sort of thing. So the Axe Effects has turned back on and we have the updated firmware. The easiest way to check is from the front panel, hit the E knob. And right at the top here, you're gonna see 12.08 beta. If you want more details, you can go down to Utilities, hit Enter, and then Page Right and you'll see a more detailed view, firmware 12.08 beta 2, the date and some other information there. So that takes care of the Axe Effects side, the hardware side, but you also want to resync Axe Edit to the latest data that the hardware just got. Now, when you update to full release versions, it'll usually do this automatically. And if you've ever seen like communicating or reading block definitions um, and you didn't know what that was, well, that's what this is. It's syncing Axe edits data with the hardware data that was just updated. 
However, if you're going between beta cycles like this, we went from public beta one to public beta two, it won't do that automatically. So anytime you update the firmware, take a look at XEdit. If it does it automatically, you're good. But if it doesn't, and it's always a good idea to just do this if you don't know if it happened, what you wanna do is go to settings and refresh after new firmware. You're gonna refresh the XEdit data or FM3 edit, either one, and it's just gonna synchronize like the behind the scenes data. It's not gonna change presets, it's not gonna like delete anything. All it's gonna do is update between the editor and the hardware. So we're gonna click that and you'll see reading block definitions. This occurs when saved definitions do not match those in the connected device. And that's exactly what happened. We updated the firmware, but because we're doing betas, uh, public betas, it doesn't automatically update and edit. So always go to settings, refresh after new firmware, and just make sure everything's synchronized. Sometimes they put a new feature in the hardware and until you synchronize like this, it won't appear in X edit. Or if they added a new amp and it you know changes the list of numbers, like they change the order and you look on edit and you're like, oh, this, it says 59 base guy, but it sounds like a boogie or you know, something like that. It's probably because of this. So click settings, refresh after firmware update, and it should synchronize all of those sort of little issues there. Again, while it's communicating, just don't click anything. You can play your guitar probably, but just wait, just let it finish. It should take uh, about a minute or so, and that's it. You're all set, everything's synchronized between X Edit or FM3 Edit and the hardware, and you're ready to go. All right, so let's say you tried to update the firmware, but something went wrong. You turn the Axe FX on and the screen doesn't come on or it just says an error message or something like that. There is a recovery process and it's really easy. It's built right into the hardware. First, what you wanna do is turn off the Axe FX. Then you wanna hold down both page left and page right buttons at the same time. Now notice the unit is still off, so I can take my time doing this, but make sure you have a firm press on both of those buttons and hold that. While you're holding those two buttons down, turn the power on. You'll see pretty quickly that an emergency utility screen pops up. From here, you wanna go back to your computer. Now, unfortunately, you can't use the built-in fractal bot for this recovery process. What you wanna do is open the standalone fractal bot program, so make sure you have that as well. Now, just in this video, this might look exactly the same, but this is the standalone version of FractalBot, and this is what you need to use if you're doing the recovery process. So you're gonna select your device just like before, we're using an AxeFX 3. You're just gonna resend the same firmware update file that you did before. So you're gonna click and drag, same exact steps, and then hit begin. Now, hopefully this time it goes through, no errors or no problems. If you continue to have a problem with that file, I would delete it, Maybe download the update file again from the Fractal website or the forum, wherever you got the first one. Sometimes downloads can have errors and it's not the right file. So just download it again and install the same file again while you're in this emergency utility mode. Once you send it, this bar will fill up just like before and it'll tell you to turn the Axe FX off and on again the same way. And this process is the same for the FM3. You would just hold the page left and right buttons while you turn the unit on and you'll get to the recovery mode. All right, so that's it. You now know how to back up the hardware, which is very important. Always, always have a full backup and always back up at least your user presets, if not the whole thing, before you update to a new firmware. You never know if there might be an issue or you just don't like it and you wanna roll back. If you don't have your presets backed up, sometimes you just can't roll back. You might have to start over from scratch or just move forward with the firmware. So always back up just in case anything happens. You also know how to send your backup files back to the unit in case you do want to roll back, including the old firmware file. And you also know how to update to the new firmware using FractalBot either built in to X or FM3 edit or the standalone FractalBot version. Super easy, very important, always back up and you'll be good to go. All right, see ya.